When we bought God's Cottage in 2010, there wasn't as much as a square inch of ground behind it. There was just a tiny little space at the end of the cottage where we managed to get planning permission for the repository. And then there was just a little overgrown front garden with the tin shed of a garage on it. When we cleared it out, we were able to create parking space for four cars or for a bus. But other than that, we didn't own as much as a single inch. Worse still, the treatment plant was on our neighbour's land. And when issues arose in relation to the treatment plant, then we faced difficulties. At that particular time, I inquired if there was any possibility of being able to buy even the space of ground that the treatment plant was on. And it was explained to me that the field wouldn't be sold in parts, but rather that eventually it would probably go on the market and that the asking price would be two million. Well, needless to say, that shut me up. However, it didn't stop me from praying. And we did have a way leave agreement to go out to check our back, to check the roof, etc. Somehow it happened that I lost an occasional miraculous medal out there. Now I wonder how I managed to do that. Meanwhile, I felt inspired to pray that somehow, even in my own lifetime, that we would be able to secure that field. Now, I don't believe in doing the lotto. In fact, for me to do the lotto would be to step outside God's plan for my life. It would be a sin. However, that didn't stop me from praying that perhaps if somebody did win the lotto, that the Lord would then inspire them to give some funds for the purchase of the field. Well, I'm afraid that prayer was not answered. There was no funds passed on to us from anybody who won the lotto. Meanwhile, did you ever have the experience of a prayer being answered before you wanted it answered? In 2014, while we were still seeking to pay back people their interest-free loans that they had so generously given to us for the purchase of God's Cottage, I got a phone call from our manager in God's Cottage to say that the field in question and the sawmill yard that was in the bottom of it had gone on the market. Oh my God, I thought we were going to miss the opportunity. We just didn't have the funds. But then, just like when we bought God's cottage, I found it really being put on my spirit that if we didn't buy the field then, the chance would never arise again. Thankfully, the valuation that was put on it by the auctioneers was a somewhat better than what I had been told previously. The valuation put on it by the auctioneers was 250000 Now, I suspected it wouldn't go quite for that. I made an appointment with the finance officer of our bank, and I investigated whether we'd be able to get a loan of 300000 And he seemed very positive. Encouraged by this, we entered the bidding and eventually we managed to buy it for 300000 Meanwhile, of course, we made public what we were doing and once again promises of private interest-free loans started to come in and also some donations. So much so that I was eventually able to tell the loan officer from the bank that we were now only looking for a loan of 150000 some time later, he came back to me and started to indicate it didn't look as if the bank would be willing to give us 150,000. By then, I was able to tell him, well, if we could get 110,000, we would manage. And meanwhile, further donations and loans were coming in and we had paid the deposit and things were moving along. And then I got a phone call from the bank manager to tell me that they weren't willing to give us as much as a single cent because of the fact that so much of the money we had was in fact interest-free loans. This, despite all the collateral that we were in a position to offer. There was God's cottage itself, 
which after all the work that we carried out on it was now worth over 500,000. There was the field itself which we were buying for 300,000. I was prepared to put up my own house as collateral. On top of that, we had already shown that starting from needing 300,000 just a few weeks earlier, we could now get by if we got 70,000. And guess what? The bank which I myself had been dealing with for over 40 years and which I had never owed a penny. They weren't willing to give us even 70,000 of a loan. So there we were. We had purchased a field. We had paid the deposit. It looked as if we would be like the man in the Bible who started the build and was unable to finish. The bank had truly pulled the rug from under our feet. We start to lose not just the field, but also our deposit and the confidence of our supporters. We would have been the laughing stock of the country. To say that I was in shock would be an understatement. I was hardly able to stand up with the shock and my poor head was done in. Whenever I find myself in a distressing situation or an upsetting situation, the first thing I do before talking to anybody else is to find a place where I can be with the Lord. And thankfully, years ago, I developed the ability to pray while walking and over the years my ability to feel close to the Lord when walking has grown and grown and grown and grown. And so the most natural thing for me to do was to head straight out the gate and to go for a walk up the road. As I went up the road, at first I was thinking of how we could possibly appeal to the bank and who we could appeal to in the bank. But then as I walked, as my mind calmed down, as I became more open to the presence of the Lord, I began to realise that I was to forget about the bank, that I was not to lose another minute or another ounce of energy in dealing with the bank. But what were we to do then? The next thought was to send out an appeal to the people who had been generous to us in the past. There were two difficulties with that. The first one, I just don't have the neck to go asking people for donations. And the second one, all the initial letters we received, guess where they are? They are here in God's cottage, buried beneath the altar. However, as I thought about it, I realised that while we didn't have the letters, the vast majority of the people who had given us donations and given us interest-free loans are subscribers to the curate's diary. And so I was going to be able to get their names and addresses from there. While I knew I didn't have the neck to write to people asking them for donations, I did feel free to write to people telling them of our need and that if they could give us a loan to tide us over, we would deeply appreciate it. And as that cleared in my mind, even though I had set off on a walk that would have lasted about an hour and a half, I turned around and headed straight back to begin the letters. And so it was the letters went out in the very next day's post. And praise God, Within seven days, we had got all the money we needed, some of it donations, some of it interest-free loans, but we had more than enough money in order to go ahead with the purchase of the field. There is the Bible promise that God works all things for the good for those who love him, and sometimes he works in mysterious ways. Today I'm very thankful for the bank. Because if the bank hadn't given me the impression that there would be no difficulty with getting the loan, we wouldn't have entered the bidding in the first place. And I still had the confidence springing from the assurance that we could get a bank loan right up until all we needed was 70,000, a very manageable sum. So despite the fact that the bank pulled a rug from under our feet, without them we wouldn't own the field today.
On the altar is this little prayer card to remind me in every Mass to pray for the people who have so generously supported us. Today we, in particular, we give thanks for all the donors who make God's cottage possible. And especially those who came to our assistance that time that the bank pulled the rug from under our feet. But all the donors who have supported God's cottage and all who are working to promote it. Lord, hear us. Amen. On that occasion when the bank pulled the rug from under our feet, we risked, we would have lost the field, we would have lost our deposit, we would have also been the laughing stock of the country if it hadn't been for those who came to our assistance. But we think of the other people who have been hurt by the banks and people who, because of the crash in our country, found themselves in a very difficult situation and some of them are still in a very difficult situation. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will guide them, that you will show them the steps to take and that they may be able to surrender everything into your hands and find your plan for their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us.